So you move away from rowing because you want to experience some other things in life. What does the next decade hold for you? <laughs> I have or no idea. Is that part of the fun or no? Well, yeah, part of the fun is not knowing, but it, eventually you have to settle into something. And, and the, uh, I think the, the ultimate answer is that the, the pursuit of excellence has, uh, I guess, many avenues. And it's, it's choosing that one that really uh, creates the passion. 2007. Someone suggested that maybe you were looking for your soul. Growing um, was clearly a passion of yours. Yeah. Have you found a new passion yet, or are you still searching? I'm working on it. I'm closing it. So I've been, uh, been, you know, looking at some different things, and it's uh, anything you can mention? No. It's a, it's a challenge, but it's it, what you can't look for is a one-to-one -one replacement, right? Because when I started out in boxing. Uh, I had no idea what the future would hold. I just sort of had this idea, and I think that you you go at it the same way. And so you can't start the next dream and finish. You know, you have to accept the uncertainty of what the future might hold, and you just you pick something and, and go at it, sort of hammering tongs. Our audience are a large students, so obviously you went to Berkeley, I did. Princeton. And perhaps just drawing I never, from... I never went to Princeton. Oh, I, just, I lived there. Yeah, oh, okay. I well, went to Berkeley. You went to Berkeley. I did. And uh, obviously from your experiences as a cox, or just general life experiences, what advice would you give uh, perhaps someone who's 19, 20, maybe 21, leaving university? Any advice about perhaps career choices, how to go after you know, that pursuit of excellence, finding your passions? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, oftentimes there is a, uh, you know, you feel external pressure to do one thing or to do another thing. For parents, friends. Or yeah. just even societal, you know, you go to a certain school and, and students from certain schools go on to do certain things. I think what you have to do is, is find what really stokes your passions in your heart. And it's hard, but when you're young, the, the advantage that you have is a little bit of time you know, to try a few different things and, and, and see what you like. And when you find something that you're passionate about, then Hold be ruthless in saying, you know, this is what I love and this is what I want to do. Ruthless and cutting other things out of your life so you well, can focus on that one thing? No, just be, be ruthless in, in not giving in to peer pressure or saying that, well, this is what I should be doing or anything like that. You just, you have to do um, what brings unbalanced joy to your life. Now, I, I say that, right? Work work is hard. Uh, work is competitive. That's the nature. Uh, it is the nature of it. And so you have good days and you have bad days. But what you want to find is something that on balance to say, you know what, I, I like what I do and I enjoy the people that I work with and I feel like I'm, I'm doing something that contributes value to the world. And I, I think that's what's, what's most important. But the what can't be substituted is passion, right? You can't manufacture it. You can't, um, you know, you can't grow it in your backyard. Um, it has to come from inside. And when you find something that you're truly passionate about, I think it changes completely the way that you approach waking up in the morning. I mean, you say that a lot of people have said to you, "Wow, you know, getting to a point where you could compete for an Olympic gold, win an Olympic gold, that took a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice." But you say it wasn't that hard. It wasn't, or well, it was hard, but it didn't feel that way because it was my passion. It didn't yeah. feel like work. It was just fun for me. Yeah, sacrifice, uh, hard work, definitely. Sacrifice, not even close. Uh, it was something that There's nothing you'd rather be doing. All of us wanted to do. Yeah, and believe me, it was painful. There were days when it was hateful, or you just you have a bad practice and you'd want to throw furniture. Uh, but in the end, yeah, there was nowhere we'd rather be. We all had lots of different choices. We could have been many different places. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. This has been Peter, Peter Cipolloni. He may be short in stature, but he has the heart of a giant. Oh, man. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Right. Cheers, man.